have a uh, fifth wheel with the bedroom slide with a rotten floor. I did try to beg this job off and say I did not have time and I could not help, but they were very persistent in, in indicating that this is their house and they can't get anybody else to help them and they can't move it. So I have a lot of fears and I hope everything goes okay because this is going to be a big job in the best case scenario. All right, so this is a 2006 Montana fifth wheel. The uh, bedroom slide floor is rotten. So we're going to try to get that fixed. The owner's already started to take it apart, but I'm going to have to finish up the job. First thing I have to do is get the bed out of the way. And uh, we have to release this floor. This floor right there. We're gonna try to do it without pulling the slide out because that's a lot more work that we don't want to do in a mobile setup because I obviously don't have my forklift here. So this part's pretty straightforward. I won't even record it because I'm just gonna be disconnecting the bed, taking this fascia off because it's gonna be easy to t take off, get the uh, slide mechanism back, pulled back out of the way, and then I'll have to retract the slide a little bit. But first things first, let's get this out of the way. All right, so the bed's out of the way. I just have to disconnect those bolts out of there so I can use a slide mechanism to get the slide out of the way. Then the box will just re be free-floating. The fascia I've pulled off, this is the sub-fascia behind it. This is actually with a ceiling surface. Really, not that impressive. So here's that wiper seal you can always see from the outside. They did start putting a, a dam right here to keep water from coming in. And it's just a piece of illuminated, uh, extruded aluminum. It's kind of like a little gutter too, because at the bottom there, you can see that gutter. Now on the outside, I'm going to have to pull this uh, corner molding off. It's usually what happens is water gets behind the seal right there, and it's stuck right in here and starts rotting everything out. And this front fascia. I don't think we'll have to take the side fascias off. It's hopefully just this bottom piece. We'll make it up as we go along. So of course underneath, like I said, the owner already took this off. There's probably some rot on the sidewall, but that's not going to be that concerning to them. Uh, I have to take this molding off down here because there's going to be screws. You can see this screw right there that goes up. That's what's holding the uh, the floor into the sidewall because the sidewall actually will have uh, aluminum framing in it. I'll try to show that again on the inside. You should be able to see it. Uh, right. And I took the uh, fascia off on the inside, and then there's that... Uh, piece of mold there's that piece of molding acts as a gutter to hopefully drop water out right there which i guess is a good idea but of course it is dropping it right on top of this trim and if this uh, silicone lets go it's just get letting water down into that piece of a uh, angle aluminum right here and water will just hold right there but what i wanted you guys to see was it's just not a problem on the side too now you can see all that rust. So water's getting in the front too. Because again, this fascia, the sidewalls behind it, water will come down and just get behind this bead of silicone. And then once it gets down behind there, it gets stuck on this lip. And for some reason they sealed that too. I definitely shouldn't have sealed that because it won't let the water out if it does get in there. And then you just have water uh, sitting right there, wicking into the plywood. So let me just go ahead and get all these screws pulled out. We'll pull that off. So on the extrusion, there's the fascia, there's that lip. You can see water's just been pooling there for a while and it can't get out. Ideally, there should be some drain holes put in it. I will likely put some drain holes in it. So if we take a look over on this side, let me get this screw out of the way if it doesn't break. I can 
fall down. This is just a ABS. I haven't decided if I'm going to reuse this one or go with a different method. I haven't decided that yet. But you guys should be able to see all the rot from there. So that's not looking so hot, is it? No, it's not. But that's why we're doing this. Since this is what kind of supports it, the whole thing is kind of, uh, I don't know if you can see how low it is on this side and how high it is in the middle. It's just getting crushed and each time it goes back and forth it's going to be damaging this seal more than it already is. Now underneath right here you should be able to see those uh, carriage bolts. These are flat headed carriage bolts. That's what's going to that uh, angle iron that the slide mechanism hooked up to. Uh, for the next step I just have to secure the slide out topper on top so that it's not trying to close it. Uh, then I just have to uh, disconnect the slide mechanism on the inside and should be able to start pulling out this uh, this floor. That'll be the fun part. Then we're we'll going outside. They got the bolts for this extruded or this uh, angle iron right there. The four of them. So all this cylinder does is pull this frame in. The frame goes inside this this uh, tubing right there. But that's also attached to that piece of angle iron, which of course is attached to the floor, which then moves the whole box in and out. So it only attaches at the bottom. The whole slide itself is uh, pretty free floating. So you guys can see that. Now because uh, this hydraulic slide out has a one pump, not all of them are going to have this, but this one actually has a manifold right here. So this one's labeled. You can actually label see it right there. Main opposing bed. I just turn off the, the living room and the opposing living room and leave the bedroom one open. And now when I retract the, uh, the slide out, only the bed slide is going to move. I don't have to worry about moving stuff out of the way where I just pack stuff up. Now, I don't have the top fascia off or that one off yet because what I want to do is... Make sure that the slide's not going to fall out. Because once this is out of the way, the only thing that's just keeping this box from falling out through this uh, opening in the sidewall is this fascia. So we want to keep those on. I was just taking those off for illustrative purposes. All right, so I've put that fascia back on. Now I'm going to run this cylinder back in. The slide button right here. That was easy. All right, now we just rip this floor out. All right, so now this box is pretty, this box right here is pretty free floating. I can move it by hand pretty easily. That's why I wanna make sure that inside fascia was on there. In years past, there was a time where I would've actually pulled this entire slide out out to do this, but you learn and you learn. So I have a method right here that I'm gonna try in a mobile position and it should work all right but in order to actually get this uh floor in i'm gonna have to make some space on the threshold right here because this is still holding up this is actually supporting the weight of the slide out so i need to get the weight of the slide out off of uh this transom right there if you had a forklift it could be done or if you have a couple jacks i'm going to be using these uh, jack screws right here and i'm going to be making braces out of this two by two i'll basically screw this into this uh this slide box itself where those screws already are then i'll use a jack screw to lift the whole thing up kind of like making stilts for it to stand on so i don't really want to put extra holes in here and i don't want to take the fascia off either and hide the holes so i'm basically just going to put this up in place about where i want it to be all right i'm going to hit it with a hammer And uh, that would have uh, indicated where those screws are going to be. So I just drilled some holes right there. Take those screws out and use some uh, longer screws. And that'll be able to use these as stilts. And I haven't made any new, new holes. Do that on both sides.
All right, so I just have a uh, toenailed into this jack screw, this board, and then, like I said, I used those screws, and now I'm starting to lift it up off the the guide there. All I have to do is uh, tighten that up or extend it out. But we're almost completely off. I put my finger underneath there. So now I just have to do the same thing on the, this side. And uh, we're about ready to pull this uh, floor out. It's important that we uh, we can't ha have anything on the floor because uh, that'll be in the way. So that's why you have to have these stilts right there. And then with the pressure off of here, now we can pull the floor out. I just I think I have one screw holding it on. One or two screws right over here. Okay. Hi, Thomas. There's a hole there. How dare you put a hole in the slide? We got to see a little bit better here. So there's that Teflon guide or nylon or whatever you want to call it. Kind of see how rotten it is now. So now we just have to cut a new one. Uh, have to go get some new uh, plywood. Looks like it's about three quarter inch. That's the next step. Three quarter inch plywood. Need to go get some. All right. Rather than guessing, I went got the. Uh, Old one taken off. Right there, we measured it up. And I got uh, the big box door to cut it for me because it's a lot easier. They'll do a straighter cut anyways. And now, I just have to rebuild it. So all, it's pretty straightforward. We'll just uh, swap out the uh, carpet. Just take this carpet off and swap it out. Uh, and then this ABS, sheet ABS, looks like we're gonna be able to save it. Uh, they do sell white stuff at the big box store, but it's a lot thinner and it's not UV safe and it will crack over time. So this stuff looks like it's been holding up pretty well. This is contact adhesive, spray adhesive. We'll be using very similar stuff because it's going to have perimeter screws all the way around holding it in place. And then actually the carpet down there gets stapled over the top of it. So being wavy, there's a lot of them out there that are wavy. That's going to be normal because this will expand and contract and you're never going to get rid of that. All right, so we have the old one on top. We're just gonna mark where those holes are for the bracket. Now it might be hard to see, but this plywood, about three quarters thick, you have a nice side, nice and smooth. The other side, uh, it's got lots of holes in it, knots in it. So we want this side to be the uh, the downside with that ABS on it. All we have to do now is put these down in there. These are carriage bolts. They'll get pretty tight and get flush with the uh, the surface really well so you shouldn't have to miter these out or, or recess these out at all let's just go ahead and flip this over and uh, put that bracket on I should watch it being sucked up anyway all right pretty flush now yeah. all right so with that installed actually uh, it's going to add a lot of structure to the uh, the floor too Gives an anchor point for the slide out, and then with the uh, the wall all the way around it, it actually makes it pretty strong. So this ABS is going to weatherproof the fiber, uh, the, the plywood, and then also act as a bearing surface so that it reduces friction. So I just have to make sure we get any big chunks off of here before we glue it back down. So just to uh, keep this stuff from walking around, we're just going to use some uh, spray adhesive. This is Super 77. I don't like this stuff, but it'll work fine enough for these applications because once this is in place, this edge is going to hold it down. That edge is going to hold it down. The carpet's going to be stapled right there and right there and that edge. So it'll just basically be free floating after that point, which is why these buckle. So I just have to uh, spray both sides with the contact adhesive. I'll spray this side and then the uh, other side of that. 
and then we'll put it into place and it'll be stuck for a little bit. All right, I'll go ahead and just roll it down. There we go. The next thing we're gonna do is uh, put the carpet back on. It's gonna wrap around and get stapled on underneath. There's one of those special RV staples. These are always hard to find, the stapler and these staples. These are not quarter inch crown wire staples. They call them the AS-16. It's very difficult to find this. This is an expensive little gun too. But the industry uses these for uh, paneling and carpet. All right, so I think we're ready to put this floor in. We're just gonna drag it over from here, put it in right up there. I'll probably add a lot more screws though. Get the camera. All right, and to finish up, I'm gonna add a, lot, a couple more three inch uh, screws. Just adding a few more screws because it couldn't hurt. All right, so this side's out a little bit because of the carpet above. That side's flush, and this side's out a little bit because of the carpet above. So now, theoretically, the floor is installed. Let's go inside and take a look. Okay. So there we go. We're looking pretty good right there. And, uh, yeah, this is what we're supposed to be at. You want to go ahead and hit the, uh, the out button on that switch right there? Go ahead. All right, that's good. Now these holes are slotted on this side and on this side, so I can change the height and side to side. I've already centered the slide out in the opening, so I just have to tight, put bolts in there and tighten it up. Then we should be square going in and out. So now all I have to do is put uh, all the inside trim back together and the outside trim and seal it up. If that part's boring, if I find anything useful, I'll let you know. Okay, and with that, the inside's put back together again. Go ahead and uh, run it in. Let's see how we do this time. It's pretty smooth. Nice. All right, well, with uh, that one checked out okay, I can finish up on the outside. Don't have to worry about tearing it all apart again. So we're going to be using a factory that used some butyl tape on this uh, surface right there that really didn't do much because it works off compression. It's not an adhesive. We'll put silicone on this side and on this side, try to fill the gaps. I'll drill a few weep holes in here to let the water out, and then I'm going to use longer screws to hold it in. So this should go through the uh, plywood into the actual framing. Unless you... Uh, can't do a straight line. Can't do a straight line to save your life. <laughs> uh, start low and then push it high. Now, of course, don't forget to put these screws back in. I just hit them with some sealant. That way uh, the holes are sealed again. Now, unfortunately, on the side pieces, there was one that was missing, already taken off. The owner didn't know where it was, so I had to make new ones. So we got this right here. That, uh, we had to get some aluminum, drill it out, and paint it. Rather than trying to find the exact factory one. So in this one, I want to put a whole big bead of uh, silicone on the sides and on the bottom. Uh, and then I'm going to definitely try to get a lot right behind here. That way water won't uh, have an issue going backwards and uh, hopefully. Alright, so there's just 100% sealant 
silicone sealant, it's white, so I have it on both surfaces right there. And I got it right behind, right there. Okay, so you should be able to see that oozed out pretty well right there, filled up all the voids that could have been letting water in. I just have to clean this off real well, and I'll put one more screw in, I'll show you where at. It's gonna be right behind here. So right behind this seal right there is that little gutter. I just need to make sure we do a good job getting all the sealant off. Alright, so the last thing I have to do is just going to put a cap seal right here. A cap seal across the base right here. But before I do that, I want to just add a couple weep holes. Just in case water does get in here. I want it to have a way out. There we go, there's one. There's two. There's three. And there's four. So now that way, if water does get behind here because of seal failure, and it makes its way down to here, it'll have a way out. I don't want it to put over here because it'll just uh, go into the floor. We don't want that. But yeah, we should be a lot better now. One of those wheat poles, again, if it comes in from the side right here and gets down into it, it'll at least have a way to drain down. Because traditionally, these are sloped a little bit, so if water's going to go anywhere, it'll come across right there. All right. Pretty much, this cap seal, this job's done. Well, there it was, replacing the floor on a bedroom slide out on a 2005 Montana fifth wheel. Wasn't too big of a job. The biggest key is knowing that you didn't have to completely pull the box out. You can do it if, as long as you support it correctly. I just use these uh, screw type jacks, but you can use floor jacks, a uh, whole bunch of blocks, any way you want to use it, but it will work. And you should be able to see the new floor underneath right here. Brand new. We already ran it in and out a few times. And we're doing really great. Really pleased with the way it turned out. I just have to do a slide out top for fabric. But that's another, uh, we won't do that video. There it is laying right there. So there it was. It can be done. Can't forget to open up these valves again so that their uh, other slides will work. Don't do that. <laughs>